Hello, legends, heroes, and poopy heads. Welcome to the Omni Flash channel, where Omni Flash will take gaming to the next level. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Omni Flash, and I am your guide to Perfect World Mobile. Some of you are asking for an in depth cleric video, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go into both Sage Healer as well as Demon DPS. We're going to show you how to do each one the best that you can do if you like this video please like subscribe smash that notification bell so that you'll know when the next video is coming out and comment below and you'll be entered to win a 25 dollars itunes or google play gift card march 15 2020 okay so as you start the game you're going to have to level up all of your skills equally so that you can reach the next cultivation level that is correct however once you get enough cultivation level i think to be about level 38 you can get your skills all up to level 38 then in order to heal the best that you can heal you want to focus on four heal spells that would be iron heart wellspring heal boat and heal beam all right so iron heart first priority iron heart is your bread and butter you can move while casting iron heart it is your regen spell i love it i just i cast that all the time all my everybody has three stacks of it at all times they're all they have heals on them at all times wellspring super strong single target heal Heal Bolt is a super quick, just one second multi target heal. And then you have Heal Beam, which is a wide area effect heal that takes two and a half seconds. It, it that, that cooldown, I mean, that time, two and a half seconds for that cast time is just too long, in my opinion. Plume Shell is a nice spell. It can give both you and your target a shield. So don't ever plume shell yourself. You want to plume shell someone in your party, okay? Because you will get the same effect anyways. So it's a good spell to use on your tank or or on your squishy DPS. Actually, I, I would recommend you throw it on your squishy DPS. Somebody who might die immediately, put the plume shell on top of them. It may give them an extra shield and keep them alive. So when you're healing in dungeons, you're going to use Iron Heart a lot. In PvP, you're going to use Iron Heart a lot. You can move and do this regen spell stack three times on all of your party. So you're going to level that up super high. And I have that at 68. The second most important spell will be Thunderbolt. Heal Bolt. Heal Bolt. So what you want to do is put that as your second highest as well as Wellspring. Those two spells have a one second cast time so that cast time is important because this way you will be caught in like a, a, a red zone you won't get one shot you'll be able to move after just one second if you want to use heal beam be ready to cancel the spell and move out of the way in case you want to dodge something heal beam has two and a half second cast time it is very very slow so if it's something like the very last boss of dusk be sure to be super alert i mean if you don't have to use heal beam don't use it just rely on your heal bolt wellspring and your iron heart if possible if there's going to be a lot of red circles or you know aoe's that you have to avoid all right so if you look at the skills of my cleric she can heal Dusk Twilight True if you have a strong enough tank, okay? So you don't have to have these skills, but these are really strong. I would recommend you getting Guard Seal. Guard Seal is nice for PvP. It will help you hypnotize your enemies. Heal Ward is super nice if you uh, just want to have damage shields. I like damage shields. So Heal Ward is really good. You should try to get the Heal Ward as your first or uh, it's top priority as your first sage four skill that you need next flash heal i like but it is it is of course on your heal beam and i don't rely on heal beam i like to use heal bolt wellspring as well as iron heart i like iron heart so 
I prefer to get Serenity. I recommend getting Serenity. It is your rare skills. As your rare skills, Serenity is my favorite. Um, limitless, all in one. Though they're all really good. You should also get Renewal. That will buff your team, increase the DPS on your mages and your Volpines. The Sage 3 skills that are super important would be Passage and Holy Dance that makes your heal bolt and Wellspring a lot stronger. And for Sage 2, Empower is really nice, Dr uh, Drift Quill, Fortify, those are okay. Um, Fortify I used to like, but I mean it's still good for Mirage, so maybe 5 points into Fortify, 5 points into uh, drift Quill, but you want 10 points into Empower, 10 points into Renewal, 10 points into Passage, 10 points into Holy Dance, 10 points into Heal Ward. After you have 10 points into Passage, Holy Dance, and Heal Ward, you can put 10 points into Flash Heal. Guard Seal is super nice. You put 10 points into Guard Seal once you have enough points. Dispeller. I, I don't like Dispeller. Dispeller doesn't really it's not very useful. It has a small AOE. It doesn't really dispel everybody. Everybody has to stand next to each other to dispel. It's, it doesn't really work. Empower super useful. It will increase the damage on your Volpines and Wizards. Renewal as well, but I've never seen Renewal on anybody. I haven't seen anyone in the server. I've seen several Serenities. I made several Serenities. All right, so that this is not actually my healer. It's actually my friend, Cinnamony. She is mostly free to play. And she, she bought this costume. Other than that, she has she just recently got the Riverside card, which is a really good deal. You get 100 bound ingots for the rest of your life. Um, 100 bound ingots a day for the rest of your life. All right, so demon clerics are undersold. They are actually super good. Simple fact that you can revive your main healing cleric when, I mean, when she dies. All right, so normally, in any type of situation, your main healer cleric dies, your dungeon's over, okay? Now, if you have a demon cleric as a DPS, your dungeon's not over. Your demon cleric will uh, revive your main healer, and your dungeon will continue. So it can save many runs. Now, the only problem is, is when I told you to level up only only your healing skills that lowered your amount of dps that you could put out because as a dps you want to have all of your skills leveled at the same level so right now you are all all your all your skill levels are into four skills the rest of your skills like your tempest and your and your cyclone they're they're super super neglected you want to level up tempest and cyclone as well as your razor blades your razor feathers you, your normal attack you want to raise those up as well really you need to raise up all of your damage skills okay so you can't just focus on four skills that will lower your dps that's why if you're a super good healer sometimes your dps is lower also, you won't be using you won't be using the same books. Your sacred books are going to have to change. You're going to have to use DPS sacred books. I'll link I'll link uh, videos on DPS sacred books. I'll tell you the healing sacred books a little bit later in the video. If you're a dedicated healer, I recommend you not to get your demon books. But, you know, if you have some extra gold, I guess you can get demon books. But, you know, I mean, if you just want to heal, you don't have to get your demon books. Alright, so we're going to go and demonstrate some of your skills. So, damage-wise, you have Rune Hex, which is one of your super nice skills. It has pretty much no cast time. Rune Hex is a dot that does a lot of ton of damage over time, as well as Distress is a single target attack. So a lot of your damage is going to be single target, but you can move and they have like instant cast times, Distress, and Rune Hex. Now you can also use Lightning. Your Tempest is 3 seconds, Cyclone is 1 second cast time. 
Miracle is a super nice skill that is an instant cast time, but it's AoE. You see, this AoE is really nice. However, it's coming from you, so you have to get really close to your target to use that. You probably want to be kiting, so I guess you, they can kite into you. But yeah, Distress, Rune Hex, and Miracle are your instant casts. You can use them while moving. Pretty nice skills to use. Uh, for PvP, you do have two seals sort of put people to sleep. You have the God Seal of the God, as well as Penta Ward. You can use these to put people to sleep. However, like Penta Ward, they can they can wake up if they take damage. So you have to tell your team who are you are putting to sleep, and they just can't take damage, or they'll wake up. As a Demon Cleric, you can use like God's Wrath and Withering Aura. I like God's Wrath. It just you can use that. It will buff you and your team. Make it's a good ultimate. Does a ton of damage. However, you might just want to use your just your you know chi burst. You might just want to use your Demon Chi burst so that you don't take damage. You can take that advantage of not taking any damage. And you will also deal more damage. So Chi Burst gives uh, takes two two bars of Chi, and God's Wrath takes four bars of Chi. All right. So I forgot to talk about regeneration. Regeneration is your blue bubble for as a healer. You want to use that whenever you're in a dungeon and they say something like use your damage reducing skills. If you don't have your regeneration up, you might want to use Chi Burst. You can use Chi Burst instead, and that will help you heal and as well as protect you from taking any damage. Chi Burst is especially useful if that wave of damage is going to kill you and one-shot you. You should just go ahead and Chi Burst, block all the damage, and then you can focus on healing and reviving the rest of your team. All right, let's look at our gears. All right, so for a healer, you will want to sort of make yourself like a DPS, okay, so that you can heal more. So the best stat to look for, like on your weapon, cape, on your wrists, as well as your rings, will be M attack percentage. You want that M attack percentage. So far, I only have that on her cape. We're going to look for that on the rings, the wrists, and as well as the weapon on the weapon you want the plus five class skills that will increase your effectiveness at everything because that is a ton of class skills you definitely want plus five class skills for sure on your weapon so on the rest of your gear you can get some defensive stats that will keep you alive so that you don't die however if you want to actually demon cleric you want to go glass cannon and you want to have all M attack, min max M attack and crit type damage if you want to go demon cleric. Many times people have asked, can I be a good cleric DPS, a demon cleric, as well as a sage cleric healer? And you can't do that. And that is, you have to have pretty much all M attack skills, uh, stats on your gears. Plus, you have to have an extra set of sacred books just for dps you have to have all the demon cleric uh the demon cleric skills okay so instead of just focusing on getting healer skill books you also need to get demon cleric skill books so it gets a little bit more expensive but yes you can do both but you uh, to be effective you need to have demon uh demon skill books as well as demon sacred books all right so guild training Magic attack, you need to focus on magic attack. You want nothing into P attack. Tenacity, benevolence, very good. Anti-stuns, very good. Anti-hypnotize, silence, you put some in there. If you want to be a good PvP cleric, you will want to put points into hypnotize that will allow you to put your enemies to sleep. Pugnacity and viciousness are good if you want to deal damage with your cleric. But, you know, you do want to try to max Tenacity and Benevolence first because you want to be alive 
enemies are going to focus you, especially in PvP, they're going to try to kill you. So prioritize benevolence and uh, tenacity first. As for pets, if you can get an acorn, get an acorn and put make the acorn all magic attack. If not, be sure to get a flame rider. All magic attack flame rider would be really good. Make sure to put all the points into magic attack. Alright, so if you get a goblin pet, that would be the S-grade pet that I recommend. I loved it when I was a healer. It will allow you to survive, it will res you, it will block damage, it's amazing. Uh, I'll put a link to my goblin pet. So I'll, I'll link some more in, other videos in the description, like to my goblin pet and other videos that you might want to take a look at to make yourself the best cleric possible so be sure to check out my other videos and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching